and we're going to get started. Um, my makeup people and all, they just finished with this sound check in the video, so we're good. <laughs> so I hope everybody had a great rainy, cold day, uh, the day that the Lord has blessed us with. So we're going to thank him for it, and we're going to move forward. We're going to get finished with, uh, we're going to plan to get finished with Genesis tonight. So let's uh, go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we'd like to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for, again, uh, not only did you shower us with your rain today, Lord, you showered us with your grace and your mercy. You allowed us to drive on these uh, busy highways and wet roads, Lord, and you kept us safe, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for the ability to come in and, and to uh, worship you freely uh, in, in your house, Father. We ask that you would continue to bless us, to bless those that are on the way, bless those that are at home. Father, we ask that um, all that are involved would um, be involved in the discussions tonight, Lord, so that we can just learn from your word as you give it to us. We thank you for all things. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So, um, looks like my presentation moved a little bit. Um, I think we finished up right at the end of 43 last week. Where's my mouse? So let's see what's going on. It's on the other screen. There you go. There you go. All right. So um, I think we talked about, I asked you guys some questions last week about whether Joseph had the right to be bitter. We talked about that. We had some good discussions. I think we got all the way to uh, at the end of 43, where the brothers were returning uh, back to Egypt. And we saw where Jacob was praying for God's protection over his family. So now as the brothers return to Egypt, they, they do face a few problems, uh, <laughs> explaining why they still had the money. Um, of course, they wanted to get uh, Simeon's re, uh, lease from prison, and we needed to protect with Benjamin because now that they were able to uh, uh, get Jacob to allow Benjamin to go back. But as we saw when they got back, what did they have? They had uh, an unexpected uh, banquet. Everything that they uh, thought was going to happen, um, all of the anxiety they had from all of the things that were going to happen, they went back and their brother um, welcomed them back in. And um, uh, everything that they probably, as they traveled back, I'm not sure how long it took, we'll just say it took 10 days, 20 days, whatever it was, a lot of anxiety as they dealt with how we're going to explain what had happened, but they know that they needed to uh, go back and because um, they really they were out of food now, they needed to get back and they needed to bring food back to the family. Uh, and they also now, uh, because their youngest brother was with them, had to worry about his protection. And so um, they had a lot, a lot of things going on. But when they got back, to their surprise. Uh, they were welcomed back in by Joseph's uh, uh, servant, and he had a big feast for them. And so all the things that they thought was going to happen didn't happen. So thank God for that. So, so now they have um, a big feast. They're ready to go back until they brought their father by and take all, all of the stuff back um, uh, of what, um, you know, back to the family there. And, but Joseph had one final test for them. And so we we'll say true for consequences, right? So again, they left joyfully, as you can see, um, um, they had the, 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 the banquet, um, but they hadn't been arrested for stealing. They didn't have to, um, uh, as we saw before, they wanted to keep, keep telling Joseph and everybody that how they were, um, of course, they didn't know they were talking to Joseph at that time. They were honest men, right? And so, uh, um, so they even tried to convince themselves. But you still have that guilt and that thing in the back of your mind about what happened. But now you believe I got away with something, right? Um, um, I didn't have to disclose uh, what was going on. So, but we would quickly see, we saw maybe false confidence destroyed. So, so as we as we are continue on into uh, 
uh, 44, I'll, I'll start reading. And I'm reading from um, the New Living Translation. And it says, um, when his brothers were ready to leave Joseph, to leave, Joseph gave these instructions to his palace manager to steal each of their sacks with as much grain as they can, carry and put each man's money back into his sacks. Then put my personal silver cup at the top of the youngest brother's sack, along with the money for his grain. So the manager did as Joseph instructed. So the brothers were up at dawn and they, and they were set on their journey with their loaded donkeys. But when they had gone only a short distance, they were barely out of the city. Joseph said to his palace manager, chase after them and stop them. When you catch up with them, ask them, why have you repaid my kindness with such evil? Why have you stolen my master's silver cup? But he uses to predict the future. Now that that particular statement, which he uses to predict the future, um, there's an asterisk by it in the Bible because it tells uh, the Bible that I'm reading, because that's not in that manuscript is not in the uh, Hebrew Bible, and and it's probably not there because we know what we know that the silver cup wasn't used to do what, not for Joseph. It wasn't used to predict the future, right? We know that everything that Joseph was given to him he was given divinely by God. But in the Egyptians culture, that's what it was, that's that's what those silver cups represented, right? That's what they were used for. They put water in it and they filled it up and that's how they used those silver cups to predict the future. Now how pouring water in it or pouring water out of it, and they said the ripples, they could read the ripples. So I don't know if any of you guys went on to a, uh, I was just thinking about this, and thrown rocks. I guess you can tell how many days you're going to be living it because the number you skips on your rock. <laughs> I don't know. But that's just what they said. So that's, that's what it's saying. So that's, but, uh, but, um, but again, I don't know if that's in your, if that particular, is, is, um, uh, I guess, verse is in your Bible, which uses predictive future, but it was here. But um, again, the, the Writer here made sure that Ashton was there because it's not in the Hebrew Bible. It says, Why have you stolen my master's silver cup? And it says, No, I'm sorry. Then it says, What a wicked thing you have done. When the palace manager caught up with them, he spoke to them as, as, as he has been instructed. So, of course, they're denying it. They go, Wait a minute. You know, we know we didn't do this. We know it's not in here. They haven't gone to look for it yet. And we're so confident. That is not in here because we're all honest men. That not only it, whoever you find it from, right? You can actually kill them. All right, that's how confident they were. And so, of course, as he started looking, he found it. And where did he find it? He found it in Benjamin's. So now you know all of the brothers was like, oh no. All right. <laughs> and so you got the Benjamin really still it. No, I'm saying you got them saying, well, Benjamin, did you steal this? And when we were talking about how they really don't a lot, of, a lot of you look at their relationships, they don't really trust each other. Right. And so all of them are looking at each other like man, I'm so tough, man. <laughs> right. And so, and so, so, so now not only that, they got to lose money because He's the youngest. All of the craziness that they've done, Joseph is gone, right? They sold Joseph into slavery. They're thinking Joseph is gone. And Joseph's own, Joseph was the only brother left from the mother. And so now we can really lose that one too. And the father told, gave them instructions about, um, you know, making sure they protect the, protect the Benjamin. They don't know what to do now. Because I left here thinking, I've got away with everything that's ever happened in the past. Um, my sins haven't has have not been um, uh, 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 come to any consequences of it. And now they got to go back and face this. So they go back, and as we see, and we see them go back, and and they uh, are, are talking to to Joseph, you know. And then all of a sudden, we finally see. Um, we finally start to see Judah become the man that God has always uh, 
divinely planned him to be. He finally stepped up because you got to think about it. What did Judah do? Judah uh, slept with one of the wives, right? Judah was the one that um, uh, uh, orchestrated really the selling of Joseph, right? Judah was 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 probably the one that really was doing the talking when Reuben. I know he was trying to get them not to at least kill their brother, but Judah was the one probably one of the last voices that Joseph even heard. You know when he talked, what, think about the situation that they put him in. So now though, Judah speaks up, right? He finally steps up to be a leader. Judah starts to to really start to plead courageously, you know, for mercy and defend himself and his brothers. Um, one, because of what he had promised his father, right? Two, um, all, of the, all of the things that they all have been through, um, good and bad, were all used to build them up to who they were supposed to be in God, what their divine, what their divine plan was. So we finally start to see at least Judah stepping up. And, and and speaking up, and he said, please, my Lord, let your servant just say one word. Please do not be angry with me, even though you are powerful as Pharaoh himself. Now he knew by even speaking up, he had to ask permission, but he knew by even speaking up that, that Joseph had the power, you mentioned it last time, that Joseph had the power really to put him to death, right? I mean, Joseph had the same power as, um, as Pharaoh did. So. He knew just by speaking up, um, it could it could it could um, cause him to lose his life, but he had to, and so he vigorously defends, um, you know what had happened and the fact that you know this is what you know. Uh, please don't really enslave my brother. Um, uh, I'm willing to be to take his place. His whole nature. Is starting to change, right? Um, he is willing to um, uh, uh, fight for not his for his brothers. He's willing now to 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 understand that um, as a leader, that um, um, he might have to die. He'd have to be a slave. So again, and the biggest thing is is Joseph is is seeing some difference now, right? He has never seen. His brothers act this way. He certainly never, like I said, Judah probably was one of the last voices that he heard. And just to see them and their nature start to change. Um, um, you could you could tell from later, as we will see, Joseph's response that um, um, uh, uh, he can see now that their 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 nature is changing and it's become coming more of a nature of what God again as God called them to be. Now I'm using Joseph's name because we know that all that Joseph is doing, it's, it's all God's divine plan, and, and and God is using Joseph to do this, and that's what that, and he's and he's following it. So so again, and that's kind of really what we're seeing happening in 44. Um, he, he actually, you can see him start to somewhat confess about what has happened. To who we, you know, even though he's talking to to Joseph, you know, and he started to confess what well, what they did as you know to their younger brother, and 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 how much it would anguish is going to cause their father um, uh, if uh, Benjamin is not returned, or if anybody doesn't return, and how it could lead up to even their father's death, which is all tugging, and even. The heartstrings of, of Joseph when he's doing all of this. Anybody have anything you want to input from what they've read? You know, exactly. All of those tests that the boys failed collectively about mm -hmm. two months ago, he, was, he fulfills them. He takes, he takes the test and passes all of them. Mm -hmm. First ask, does anybody volunteer to go and get attention? Nope. Well, somebody volunteer to stay and let the other go back to you. Nope. So Judah right here, he's showing that He's now the leader. The other brothers are behind him, so the brothers trust him. He's seeing that question, did you volunteer to stay yet? Rather than him being persecuted, I'm going to stay in his state. So if Jacob trusts you, yeah, let me take Benjamin. If Benjamin trusts you, yeah, he's here with me. 
the first time Benjamin and Jacob and Benjamin and Jacob entrusted to us. Yeah. And all of that being mm -hmm. summed up right here. You're saying number four, go to number one. Yes. He's taking that position as Judah. The song replaces the came out chapter chapter five, Christ will be tired at lying for the lot of you. That's right. Very good. Anybody else? Well, good. So as we continue on, we get to uh, 45, right? Um, and in 45, we start, we see right, right away, uh, Joseph, he couldn't stand it any longer. He had been hearing all this. He had seen, you can see the, the, uh, uh, the straw, the, the, how, how the straw his brothers were. Because like you said, he saw somebody that was um, selfish Become selfless, you know. So it's just, it's just you could see the change in them. And so even he, you know, it says in 45, it says Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, "Out of, uh, out, all of you." And so while he was standing alone with his brothers, then he broke out and wept. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians could hear him, uh, uh, could hear him, and word of it quickly carried. Uh, to Pharaoh's pa uh, palace. So you start, you see now, you know, well, we always saw the, the, uh, the, the heart of Joseph and who he was, which is really starting to see, I mean, you start to see now that um, you know, even his compassion, you know, and you see that he wept for his brothers. I, uh, I, and I, I believe not so much for seeing their anguish, but who they now turned to be. Who, who they're now, he's seen that they, they um, actually have becoming. So, um, you know, uh, if somebody can read, I think it's in chapter 45, 5 through, uh, let's just see, 8, 5 through 8. And now do not be stressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life for the famine has been in the land these two years and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing harvest and God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors so it was not you who sent me here but God he has made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. I, I think that's you know very important for us to look at because you can see Joseph trying to assure his brothers because he can see you know um, how they're feeling about the situation that you know what what we thought what you guys thought again when we look at later we'll see if you can really point I think it's Romans eight and twenty eight you know what what they meant for evil right. Um, God meant for good. Um, all of these years, 17, 18, 19, 20 years, they are uh, living with that guilt and still living with that guilt about selling Joseph into uh, slavery and um, thinking that even not even knowing that this it was all God's divine plan. Uh, again, they thinking Joseph was dead, right? Um, uh, and as Joseph is assuring them is, you know, uh, not really, not only am I not dead, but God has placed me here to save your, uh, our family and so many other families uh, uh, from what you, you guys put me, where you guys have placed me in. So this, this, this pit really has become almost a palace, you know, for, um, for Joseph. Probably the second greatest show of forgiveness in the Bible, apart from what the Holy Spirit brought. Yeah. And this is so much why Joseph's story points to, we're going to look at all of some of the parallels later. Joseph's story really parallels um, Christ and what Christ did for us as he came, all, you know. And so uh, all of this is uh, setting up God's redemptive plan. So as we go on, you know, Joseph, uh, Pharaoh was excited. Um, you know, the news reached him, you know, that his brothers have arrived. 
Um, you know, he, he is excited also about the reunion that they have. And so now, you know, uh, Joseph basically, you know, tell him, hey, I need you to go back because of the famine. I need you to go back and bring the family here. And and um, uh, because you got, we got five more years of this famine and you're not going to survive where you are, um, you need to come here so that I can take care of you, so that I can provide what you, what, what you have. It was also, again, God's plan, right? To get his people into into Egypt, which uh, we're going to see, you know, as we get into even Exodus for the next, uh, you know, few weeks. So uh, that's what's, what's what's happening here. And so, what's interesting is at the end when we look at uh, 26, uh, the last few verses in 45 is when they even when they go back. Um, you know, they go back to convince their father and with the excitement that uh, Joseph is still, this is Joseph is still alive, they told him, and he is the governor of all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe it. But they went, when, when they repeated to Jacob everything Joseph had told them, when he saw, it wasn't until, you know, again, you know, you got to think he's sitting there, wait a minute. He's un if you understand, really, um uh, uh with the with the how the Egyptians looked at um Joseph and Joseph's people, you know, they can't believe this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they don't even like us. Well, how are you gonna say that he is the governor of all of this land? You know, I, at the end of the class last week, um Jay and I was talking, so I asked Jay and I asked you guys a question. Because we see all of the stuff that Joseph, we see all everything that's happening. So was Joseph free? Was Joseph a free person? Was Joseph free? No. So that's exactly right. Joseph was a slave, right? And yes, he was free to roam. He was free to do the things that, that Pharaoh did. And even when you go back to um, the, the folks that he was a servant to, I mean, you basically have this slave that's walking around, you know, um, um, uh, conducting everything. And Joseph was reminded that he was a slave, as we saw at the banquet, every time he sat down to eat, right? When he sat down to eat, this is, Joseph had the same power as Pharaoh did. Well, even when he sat down to eat, he couldn't even eat with regular people, right? I mean, Joseph had to go and sit over and eat someplace else. So I, I just wonder if we were in that situation, knowing, you know, what authority we had, but knowing that they still looked at you so lowly, you know, again, it's like our Christ, it's like Christ, right? Right? And so it's just, when you think about it, you know, I, I, you know, I just think about, I wonder what ran through Joseph's mind. They just sit there and go, man, look at them over there. I, I why do they think they're better than me? Joseph got the same thing actually more than, than they have. But what he couldn't even, you know, he, he couldn't break bread with them. You know, maybe in the same room, which you can't sit at the same table. Yeah. You know, so it was just interesting to see that yeah, you know, I think we again lose the sight of the fact that he wasn't a free free. He was, yes, he did a lot of great things, but he wasn't free. So Second son Ephraim, mm -hmm. he exactly. crossed the land of affliction. He's in the land of affliction now, the same. That's his way. He's not here. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm on the phone. <laughs> there, 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 there was, it takes me someplace else, but I'm, I'm, if, I, if I go there, <laughs> I go there. <laughs> if we don't go there, we won't. We won't. All right, so, so, so we see it, we see, so, so again, but you know, it was also interesting is, 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 it appears that Joseph really didn't, still didn't believe his sons until he saw the wagons, right? Right, when, when he saw the, when he saw everything that came back, oh, well, they did, right, they already lied to him. These are the same sons that, <laughs> that he was dead and brought back his clothes with blood on Yes. Somebody, 
Okay. Right. I didn't see for myself. And tell me he was dead. Right. You told me he was dead. He brought these bloody clothes back. And and now you're telling me that he is the governor. You know, of a land that and a land that they don't even like. Right. You know. So you're exactly right. And so we could even see. I, I believe God's divine plan because he, God God knew. Out of all the things that happened, that Joseph's not going to believe them. But not only did he send the brothers back, he sent evidence back, right? All right. And so, well, we I know I, I know you didn't leave here with all of them wagons. <laughs> See, so 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 they had to come from someplace. And so now, okay, I start to, you know, see how your story might add up. But then what Joseph says, I really need to go and see for myself. I need to see my son. And so you see then in 46 where the uh, family actually packs up and, and they go on to, um, uh, he moves his whole family, everybody. I mean, livestock, you know, children, wives, you know, all kinds of things. You know, they, and they take everything up there. And, you know, it's a, and again, as I was saying last week, you know, Joseph himself, I mean, he's for his land. Joseph was a wealthy person, you know, um, um, so there's probably a lot for them to move. So really all you see in 46, we're not really going to go too much 46 at all. It's really, you know, their journey into uh, of him moving his whole family into uh, uh, into Egypt. Um, that's what's going on in 46. So we're going to jump from 40 from there and we're going to get into chapters 40 into chapter 47. So um, to turn with me to 47, you then start to see Joseph, um, uh, his family, they're there. Joseph lets Pharaoh know that his family is there. My father and my brothers have arrived. Um, you know, uh, Joseph brings his brothers in to speak with Pharaoh and um, and, and then Pharaoh says this, it's just amazing. Says Pharaoh said to Joseph in chapter 47, five, now that your father and brothers have joined you here, choose any place in the entire land of Egypt for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt, that they live in the region of Goshen. And if any of them have any special skills, put them in charge of my livestock too. And so there was a note here. Um, yeah, free labor. Yeah. <laughs> what you think of it that way, Justin? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the best, but it is. We got to get more slaves. Yeah, a whole lot of. <laughs> 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 okay, got free labor. But the point I want to make is, is Joseph's faithfulness affected his and whole entire family, right? And he was put in a pit in prison. Joseph's mother wondered about his future. Instead of despairing, his faithful, he faithfully obeyed God and did what was right. And then as Richard is saying this, here's where we see uh, some exciting results. We may not always see the effects of our faith, but we can be sure that God will honor our faithfulness. But as you guys say, yes, he did get free slaves. So, so but they got, I guess, they, they, I guess they got their food for it though, didn't they? So I say, yeah. <laughs> got to work for it. <laughs> so they had to work for it. They have to work for it. And as we continue on, we see that um, we see that Jacob, he blessed Pharaoh, right? So let's look at um, um, and, and I want to know why is, why is that important there? So if we look at um, seven, it says, then Joseph brought and his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How old are you? Pharaoh asked him. Jacob replied, I have traveled this earth for 130 years. My life has been short compared to the lives of my ancestors. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh again before leaving his court. He also blessed him up top um, uh, when he, when he uh, I think he also said uh, when he was blessing Pharaoh. So why was it important? 
that um, that Joseph blessed Pharaoh. Anybody? They're in a strange land. Uh, they have different gods. So why was it important that Joseph blessed Pharaoh? Why was it important that? Yes. That's it. Anybody? What do you think? Huh? Okay. I like that. Yes. Anybody? Because he as God told Abraham to tell the fish about that sea. I like that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And you, we, we said earlier. Um, I'm just going on with your theme that they had three. They were they were um, now in a strange land. They believe a they, they believe a totally different God. They don't believe in our God, right? Um, I got everything I need. Uh, uh, I don't, you know. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Who do you think? Go ahead. You want to be polite, but you want to be okay, you want polite. polite. Bless them. All right. All right. Let's go to first. Somebody go to first Peter two eleven seventeen. I also think that was in the, the dick of personality. Okay. You go back and look. You know, when God granted him with something. Was that Israel's personality, personality or Jacob's personality? <laughs> 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 oh, okay. okay. I, just, well, I just want to clarify that. So. Yeah. But, okay. And, you know, I think, you know, they bless the children who they were born. They bless, you know, that was just sort of what they did when okay. great things happen. That's it. Somebody read First Peter 2 11 and 17. Love, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Mm-hmm. Be subject to the Lord's sake for ev- to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme. Or to governors that sit by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. I'm going to ask that question again. So why was it important? They're in exile. They're in a land that they're not familiar with, right? Um, so quickly, uh, right? Uh, uh, how much do you praise God when you got a pocket full of money as opposed to when you don't have a pocket full of money? <laughs> It should be the same. Yeah. As we are yeah. sure, we actually should be praising when we have pockets for money. We should be asking for money when we don't have that. <laughs> but you should praise God for it all. Yeah. Yeah. You should praise God through it all. Yeah. But so often, when things are going well, right, we forget that God has put us in those positions, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't give Him the praise, we don't give Him the honor. Um, uh, those of us that have been in uh, or, and that are still in corporate America, right? How many times have you been out to dinner someplace, the food, and everything comes on the table, and everybody else jumped right in? You knew you were supposed to pray or even asked to pray, but you jumped right in with everybody else. And all you did. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, right. you, you don't totally forsake it. 
but you still do it in such a way it's different what you would. So Larry, you don't say everybody can I pray with this. Yeah, no, you, you can't. <laughs> Just thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, I, so, so I think a lot of us, have, a lot of, a lot of us have been there, yeah. right? I mean, there's been times when they asked you to pray. They asked you. There's been times when they just took silence, right? And then you were able to. There's right. some time when they dig in. <laughs> right. So God's word is instructing us that when we're in those foreign places, when we're in those situations, right? Don't, don't forget who you are, right? And so, and also they have to understand, he understood, Job, Jacob understand that his family now, who was dependent on their wealth and what they have, right? Now has been given all of this by Pharaoh. If you're not careful, Pharaoh could become their God. And so Joseph, not only was demonstrating to Pharaoh that we appreciate what you've done for us. We appreciate, like you said, thank you for everything you've done. But I'm God. We serve a different God. I'm thanking God for what you've done for us. But understand, what I was saying in so many words, you're not my God. <laughs> right? And, 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 and it was not just a reminder to Pharaoh. And Joseph, but it was reminded to even his sons, right? He understood the nature of his sons, as we'll see. And so, and that's a reminder for us, because again, we've all been in those situations, you know, and 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 prayerfully over time, as people observe who you are, right, then you'll have those times where one, maybe they'll ask you to pray, right? Two, um, um, uh, uh, you don't feel uncomfortable by saying, hey, can I pray before we get started and not worry about who we offend? Joseph, Jacob wasn't worried that he might offend Pharaoh. He had to let Pharaoh know, I appreciate everything, right? This is what God told me I needed to do, and I have to let you understand. So, again, we, we've all been there, you know, and so, uh, I, you know, I've had situations where people have had, Illnesses in their family, and, and they'll say, "Hey, can you can you pray for my mother? Can you pray for my father? You know, whatever it is, you know." So I thank God for those those opportunities, and I thank God that they saw uh, enough Christ in me to ask me to do that. So. Sometimes they're non believers. Yes, it's not always believers. Oh no, always the time it's yeah. non believers. Say, you know, I had a young lady come to my office one day and said, "I heard that you're a man of God." I said, "Yes," and then she said. Could you pray for my family? You know, I mean, and talk a little bit, and I found out that she, at least she wasn't church. <laughs> right. So yeah. I found out that, but you know, I think people respect, you know, when you are diligent in, in you know, in, in your faith, people around you will see that and they will respect it. Anybody else before we move on? Thanks to the civil rights movement and our violence and social change. Hmm. Being tribulated by others, stand as the example mm -hmm. to say, you know, this is what my God does, and this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm not going to fight and whatever it is. Change, them to change them by seeing your good works. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, you know, Ella Terry is talking about when you go to work, it's like, why do we go to work? It's not just for a check. We, we go there because we have to see it as a harvest field. You know, what's the purpose? What's the ministry even at work? And to what Elder Forbear was saying, it's like your character stands for you mm -hmm. because people will see your character and will gravitate to you. But it's like, what example are you giving even at work when you face circumstances like mm -hmm. Joseph go through different things and will they see you as different? So we just mm -hmm. gotta always think about, I'm here to be the light. I'm here to be the salt. I'm here to represent Christ. And through me, maybe other people will come to know him because you know, most of our, the work where we work is dark. Mm 
It's dark. It's a lot of lost people. But when you come to be the light, you got to stand on your character and know and for people to know that you're different. Without you even going around toting your Bible, they just know that you're different. I remember, I think it was about I think it was a week or so ago, Pastor was sharing that all the people that got laid off at IBM, right? Well, I mean, he's sitting in the office, they didn't even know that it was going on, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, um, he just got a bonus. <laughs> so, now, wait a minute. <laughs> 200 people got laid off. I just got a, you just, I just got a notice for a bonus, you know. So, again, you know, um, you, you can just see, as you said, God, that's the difference setting people apart, you know, and things not allowing things to to affect his people, you know. And so, again, it's not that, and that, and this is what I love about the story of Joseph is, is, is those that you know, this craziness we hear about God won't put more on that you would pay. <laughs> And and, and um, you thinking because now that I am saved that that um, um that nothing's going it's going to get when when I take people we used to take people back and they've gotten baptized or they trusted in Christ uh, I hope I didn't scare them <laughs> I would tell them all the time now be ready to get real and they go huh I said yeah because now you have confessed right that you trust in Christ so the devil didn't have to bother you no more the enemy didn't even I mean he was, he was just existing. But now, right? You know, so now it's it's, it's you, you, things are, things are getting ready to happen. So you were on his team. Yeah, there you go. But if you weren't, you were at least on the sideline. <laughs> 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 you like, was a casual fan. <laughs> everything Pharaoh did, mm -hmm. Jacob was making sure he knew it's my God that's over everything. Yes, you need His blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's the one to bring. The blessing, the grace, the mercy. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what you did, which you know, we're, we're happy you did this for us, but my God is overall. Yeah. Right. Is and, and it's amazing that you even hear him, you really even hear Pharaoh say it himself, right? And he knows that, you know, um, it's it's Joseph's God that's doing all of these things, right? I'm being blessed by some of what you in charge, you know, and, and so. We even received that um, reassurance if we go back to 46 because mm -hmm. God came to him and said, Jacob, he said, here I am. Then yes. he says, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. From mm -hmm. there, I will make you a great nation. I myself will go down with you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like reaffirming that God yes. is doing all of these things. Just like when Joseph said that God sent me, God did this. This They still see God yes. doing all of this. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue on. And so, um, again, we saw in 48, um, well, when we get to 48, now, you know, we see more of, of Jacob's blessings, right? And we see, I think somebody uh, talked about Manassas and Ephraim. So you see, um, Jacob now, who has held his failing, failing rapidly, and, you know, Joseph comes to see about him. And um, and he wants to see. Basically, he brings his, his his sons with him. And so, if we as we look down into chapter eight, I mean, I'm sorry, verse eight. Uh, it says, "Then Jacob looked over to the two boys, and are these your sons?" He asked. Yes, Joseph told him. Uh, these are the sons God has given me here in Egypt. And Jacob said, "Bring them closer to me, so I can bless them." So it talks about Jacob being, you know, um, half blind because of his age. He could hardly see. And so they, uh, Joseph brought the boys closer. And so he begins to um, uh, bless his sons. And then you have Joseph doing what? Joseph trying to arrange them based on the natural order. And it goes, that takes us all the way back for the first couple of weeks when we had a discussion. And we started talking about, um, I think it was Lulu who was talking about, you know, Reuben, you know, being the oldest. And so from a natural sense, right, uh, it should be Reuben's inheritance. 
Reuben's inheritance, right? Um, but um, this is this is God has taken us out of the natural here, and 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 He has chosen uh, each time who He wanted to bless, how He wanted to bless, when He wanted to bless, and um, and so as you begin to see. Um, Joseph started to position his son because he's saying, "Hey, you, my oldest, that's who you need to bless. He's the he's the oldest. That's that's how the naturally things supposed to go." And so, so, and you see Joseph. I mean, Jacob, who was even blind, what did he do? He crosses and he, oh no, 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 right? And and so, um, um, so he he basically said no. You know, he puts his right hand on Ephraim, though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph. Uh, uh, then he blessed Joseph, and Joseph said. So then we have what, where he was um, blessing them, but then Joseph got upset, right? Because Joseph and and and, and I, I, you know, I thank God for His Word because, again, so think about all that Joseph's been through. Did Joseph forget <laughs> that that he was the youngest and that he was chosen and that God chose him? Yeah. Why would Joseph think anything different? But we, we, you know, again, this is this is us. That's what we do, right? We we forget about what God told us to do. We forget about how God had lined things up, and we 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 so often fall back into what things in the natural. When it comes to our kids, mm -hmm. we forget everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was expecting. Yeah. So this is my child. And again, he's also questioning his father's vision. Yeah, he was in one of the black, but he mm -hmm. went to the black. Went to the Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, Joseph was upset so much for, that he placed his father's hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it off, right? And and he moved it to Ephraim and head to, and, and head to Manasseh. No, father, he said, this is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. He told him, I know my son. I know he replied, replied, Manasseh will also become a great people, but his younger brother will become even greater, as his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So, you know, <laughs> you would just think Joseph would understand and fall in line, but like you said, he, you know, he, uh, but it's nothing he could do. And, and so, but you, but you see, even J even Jacob, and again, I was asking that question of why you see Jacob instead of Israel. But you see him being more like Israel here. You're starting to see his character. You're starting to see him rely on God. You're starting to see even in his. Um, I know here we say in his older age, but it takes us. It takes us to mature in our walk, right? And this is really what this is representing. It takes us to, we, we have to mature in our walk so that we understand, you know, God's plan. We want, we, we look for, and we should recognize God's plan because, um, and, and, uh, so often, you know, we jump out and want to do things on our own and we don't stop to pray. We don't stop to ask God for direction. And, and this is what did, this is what Jacob's always done. Um, uh, and because again, I believe Jacob was relying more on his. He knew who God was, but he was relying more on his wealth and his own knowledge. And when things weren't going his way, and now that God has blessed him, and he can start to see, you know, how God has blessed him and his family, you know, and how God has delivered them, you know, um, out of the uh, land where they were, and now into Egypt, where now they had they got an abundance what they need he understands it's nothing i did you know because uh jacob used to like to what be in control of everything right he has to found here to start with and we do it too right and then we but if we come to a point in our lives where we realize you know what i have to throw my hands up there's nothing i can do god if you don't do this right it just ain't gonna happen you know, it also so. too shows that you know there's sometimes it takes somebody else to show you it in a different perspective mm -hmm. Not in the way that we see it, which is kind of a play on, you know, uh, Jacob's blindness and 
Joseph's mm, sight. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I can see it in my natural way, mm -hmm. but Jacob sees it in God's perspective, even though he's his blindness or his eyesight is is the one. Yeah. I'm trying to get myself in trouble, but um I'm <laughs> <laughs> just thinking how traditionally we think of the oldest, the more experienced, they should be the leader, they should be the more responsible. And even when I think back about Mount Zion, I think about Pastor Harris, I think about Elder Sneed, you know. Most people like traditionally, okay, he was here the longest. He should be the one next in line. But that's not the way it worked out. Right. God has his own plan and, and choices. So sometimes I think when we have our own idea of how things are supposed yeah. to work, we get deep into it and it's not working the way we see it. But then when God starts to work on it, you finally realize, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> I probably would have screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying it, it makes sense, and Bobby's saying the oldest. I told y'all before, you know, again, my father, I was, I was the one that was always here, but I took more whoopings than my sister. <laughs> it didn't make sense to me. Most of the time, I didn't do a thing. It's just, it's because she was supposed to be in charge. So, and she ran to the room crying before he got started. <laughs> So it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one time I said I wasn't gonna cry. That was a mistake. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna jump to uh, 49, and um, this was really Jacob's last words to his sons. Um, and you know, um, as we're in 49. You know, really, um, Jacob blessed each of his sons and made a prediction for each one's future, you know. Um, but it was all based on the way that each one of them lived and played, you know, uh, uh, that played a role in Jacob's blessing and prophecy for them all. So we're not going to go through it. I, I would encourage you to go back in the, and to read it all because, you know, um, I know that it's, um, if, if, as you read it, don't all sound like blessings. No, they don't. <laughs> but, but I understand even, you know, so it, it, when I was looking at this, I said, well, is, is he really blessing? Was he calling them out? You know, and so what I, uh, it's, it's kind of all of the above. Yes, you're right. So, it, it, you know, he was letting them know that I understand who you are. And I, I'm letting you know that, you know, I see you. God sees you more importantly. Now you're going to be, you know, um, head of a, a great tribe. Um, and you need to understand who you are, what your character is, and 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 um, uh, but it's it's um again it was his last words to them all, and and um, uh, like I said, they're, they're they're blessings, and if, and if you again if you in 28 it even says that these are all the 12 tribes of Israel, this is what their father said as he told his sons goodbye, he blessed each one of them with an appropriate message. <laughs> So, um, of course, he was a double blessing on, on Joseph also. So, as we get to 50, um, so the last chapter there, you know, uh, of course, we see uh, Joseph, um, I think it was passed. And this is really interesting to me. Now, They've been there, things have happened. Um, <laughs> um, I won't go that far yet. Um, well, I can leave that there. They, they've been there. Um, they've been blessed by Pharaoh. Joseph has brought them there. Joseph has blessed his brothers. They, they um, um, you know, are living in the land of abundance. But isn't it funny how they still have this guilt, right? Um, it's really strange that, and then and again, it's it's just things. Just I think it's how our past likes to draw us back in. You know, no matter how God has blessed us, things happen. You now all of a sudden we want to start thinking it's because of something that that we did before, 
and God is really trying us, to, trying for us to build. He's trying to build our character of our past, it, it, and we shouldn't allow our past to take us back to that same place. But so often we do. So often we get drawn back in, and and um, uh, and that's not where God wants us because He's delivered from us, from that, delivered us from that. He's forgiven us, right? He's given you that as an experience that now you can use to for his glory. But the father passed, here are the brothers, right? But well, dad's gone now. Yes. He's gonna get <laughs> and he really forgiven us. Now he has wept. He has given you he's given you more than what you needed to go back and bring your family here. He's given you a land that you live that in Goshen with abundance, everything you need. But you're still being drawn back. You're still thinking dad's gone. Like like dad, it's really almost as if dad was their God, right? Or their savior and protector, right? Yeah, it's like the and, forgiveness was tied to yeah. dad. Like, yes. I promise dad mm -hmm. I would be joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I also made me think about our relationships sometimes. You know, you hear about you have a praying grandmother, or a praying mother, praying father. Made me start to think about our relationship with God. Is it personal relationship, or is it or a casual relationship that you have because of someone you know, like a grandmother, a mother, a father, that uh, has that strong relationship? So you really look to them more than you're looking to God, right? Uh, which means most of the times we're not getting in our word, we're not spending time, we're not knowing God for ourselves, we don't have an individual relationship, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, with God. And so, but here's Joseph again, just like God does us, because a lot of times we, I won't say walk away, but we forget who God really is in our lives, right? And then what does Joseph do? do without hesitation. Right. He assured them, you know, that um, what again, I guess Joseph said, I don't know, this is third or fourth, how many times? I don't know how many times to tell y'all <laughs> what you planned against me. The evil that you planned against me, as I've said to you before, God has planned it for good. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joseph shared that with them. And then if you look at uh, have it already here, Romans 8 and 28, you know, this is really what he's sharing with them as Romans. Right. You know, you, you um, uh, and he's saying to them, we know that all, basically, we know that all things that work together for the, for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose, right? Not your will, God's will. And you see Joseph reassuring them that I have forgiven you. God always has to reassure us. I have forgiven you. And this is, we, like I said, we really start, we really not start, but we've been seeing to this um, from 37 all the way up to 50 the parallels of Joseph's life and Christ's life and and um, so as I look at this you know it's like you said you see forgiveness you, you see mercy you see grace and and um, uh, I guess we look at you know principles to live by uh, basically you know again not allowing you know us to be drawn back into our past. Uh, so one of the things that were in the um, uh, my um, life applications Bible was is, is um, understanding God's purpose. It says, humanly speaking, says we can't understand the divine perspective. And, and as we were looking at this whole story, 37 to 50, we couldn't really understand it until we started going through. And everything, because we see Joseph what getting thrown in the pit. We see Joseph getting um, um, uh, uh, sold as a slave. And, and if you remember, I was asked you guys very early on, I said, what does blessings look like? Right? And 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 so, you know, uh, we don't always see our bad situations as blessings. And so, um, and well, that's exactly what happened here, even when you look at Joseph, because this was God's divine plan. It's just, humanly speaking, we cannot understand a divine perspective. However, if we can see some meaning and we can see some meaning in our suffering, even if it doesn't make sense logically and rationally, we can experience inner strength 
that is clearly supernatural. And we know we can see that even through Joseph's life. We may never know or comprehend our suffering until we meet Christ face to face. But with faith, we can be assured that God can use our difficult circumstances for his purpose in this world. Um, so, again, you know, as we uh, conclude in Genesis, as we as we look at uh, all the things that have happened, you know, understand that. And I look at even when we were talking about it, Foundation Fellowship, we talked about being called, right? Um, things that we're going through in our lives, the things that God has chosen to take us through, use those as your those tests, as your testimonies, um, and and know that. Um, those that have have uh, trusted in Christ as their Lord and Savior, God, that's God's divine plan. But not just what you're going through as you that that when you trust Him, but even those things when you didn't know that God had chosen you, when you didn't know that that when you hadn't trusted in Christ, God's going to use all of those things, right, to to for 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 us to bless Him, all right. A little bit out. I mean, it's, it's, I know it's obvious, but I just see how Christ turns to the cross it's exactly the same thing. Tell me. You know, and humiliated by being put on the cross, but not knowing that, say, if I be lifted up, I would join. That's they were doing to humiliate him, yes. was actually the whole purpose of the mm -hmm. thing. So, uh, then that's why the God moved through the mountains. And I think there's a lesson here too in the homeship I trust in. Because if you think about it, put your trust in your mother, your grandmother, or somebody whose life is going to end at some point, it's going to be more devastating to you. But when you put your trust in God, I think you put yourself in a position, even though losing that mother hurts, but you can kind of rejoice if you know that mother's going to have it. You understand? You know, you understand? Yeah. You, 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 know, you know, as they say, you know, send, send, you know, send them off in the. In the Joyous way, even though the pain is not going to immediately. But I think if, if you lean too much on them, mm -hmm. they are no longer there. And God is only to be there. Yeah, and I'll throw it in an email, um, <clears throat> this, and I'll send it out, and then you'll see from 37 all the way through 50, you know, um, the parallels with Joseph and Jesus. Jesus, you know, uh, their fathers loved them dearly, They're the shepherds of the sheep, right? It was sent uh, to get their brothers, right? And so um, uh, hated by their brothers, uh, others plotted to harm them, They're both tempted, they both taken to Egypt. Uh, robes, you know, that robe thing again. <laughs> robes was taken from them, they were sold for the price of a slave. They were both bound in chains, both falsely accused. And, and, and again, uh, just over and over, um, how God used an ordinary man like he uses us as ordinary people uh, to bless his people. I uh, think in the end that Joseph was so humble because he says, do not fear for am I in the place of God. Yes. You know, and he's just giving God all the glory for everything. That's very good. All right. So, as we close out, We'll start Exodus, the book of Exodus next week. So please read chapters one through six. Your heart work for the question for next week is, where have you struggled with your identity? Where have you struggled with your identity? Read chapters one through six. Larry, if I can get you to close us out. Lord God, we acknowledge you this evening as our Father, as our Savior, as our Keeper. We recognize, Lord, that without you, we will certainly fall flat. We know that you have blessed us. We are thankful for you. We are thankful for, for this class that we have gone through. We are thankful for you providing word so that we can come to know you better, so that we can understand not only what you're doing in our lives, Lord, but understand our role. And so we ask that you just continue to bless these uh, Bible studies that we have, our Bible study classes, so that we can continue to reveal to each other who you are, 
and how you love us so much that you sent your son down on the cross for our sins. And so, Lord, we ask now that you just be with us at um, part from here. We're asking blessings upon our whole church family, Lord. We have many in our family that's going through these men, sickness and illnesses and heartbreak and uh, just so much that's going on in our world, Lord. But we know that you know this. And so we just call upon you, Lord, to bless your children, to keep us in your love and care, and to walk with us daily. Because we know that when we sense your presence, we're reminded of your promise that you will never leave or forsake us. And that gives us the hope and the faith that we need to move forward. Even in the midst of the storm, we can have joy in our heart, some on our tongue on a daily basis. So Lord, we just ask that you keep us in that manner. Keep us safe as we return home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So that was that um, want to stay. We will have a uh, prayer. So the first thing I want to put on here is uh, my brother John Thorne.